Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Speed Report here on Twitch Motion 27 and 105 The Drop. We uh, thank everyone for joining us. I am your host, Sam Cook. And remember, for everything KMR, you can look at the website www.thegamingriff.com for all three series that is, Truck X and Cup Series, as well as the rules and all information accordingly, as well as news around the league. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, drop a comment, drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, so that you can get updates on everything KMR. I am joined here by former broadcaster and now driver, again, Dunker Woods, <laughs> former KMR champion, and four-time series champion, multi-time MVP, and former broadcaster fracture chain here to help us Watch analyze that. what is going on <laughs> what is going on <laughs> in kmr and we start off with breaking news hair bear who uh, was with cmr in the x series as well as cup series in the x series hair bear deciding to part ways he is going to the seven of jr motorsports uh and will continue the rest of the x series there uh, that's after a not so stellar start to uh, his X Series season in the Daytona 250, in which he finished about seventh place on the grid. We'll get to that in a moment. But right now, let's get started with some Truck Series action. The trucks went green flag uh, there at Daytona to start the season. Um, Dunker, you saw firsthand. Uh, the what the trucks were like out there what was your take on the truck series and and uh what did you take away from that well i think it was exactly what we um had discussed in the preseason speed report you know it was uh it was action packed um i was really i was really impressed and surprised that the the whole race went green flag the entire way you know it's the truck series kind of the new people uh come in new drivers and um so i was kind of expecting at least two cautions maybe three cautions uh, at least one caution for the big one and we didn't see that so i was very impressed with how they ran i think they ran uh very well very smoothly there were some uh little hiccups throughout the race but other than that it was a pretty calm race and uh glad that um impressed that laden was able to pull out for the victory yeah fractured uh laden wept dang tons of fun josh the game ojc um some of the names that are in this right now eight uh roster eight man roster out of 14 um uh, what are your thoughts on these guys and what do you think they can do in the truck series this season uh yeah I mean, it's it's a well a relatively new roster um you know well thank laden has been with us for a very long time off and on tons was with us last season um josh was with us last season and ojc was subbing around um, then you got the four guys like uh, Real Mac, unusual, uh, usual Trevor, uh, Racing Lord, and K Dog. So, I mean, it, it's literally a split four to four, even four new drivers, four older drivers. Um, you know, it makes for an interesting chemistry. And at Daytona, it worked out very well, as we saw, as Lawton was able to pick out the win, flag to flag. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure last season's Daytona uh, in the truck race also went flag to flag. Um, so it, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty good stuff right there. So, uh, Daytona definitely was a, a little bit of a trend for being a, a race to start the season very well. Um, and it's always nice, you know, you and I have talked about this many seasons on and off. It's nice to start the year with wider tracks and tracks like Daytona, Talladega, even Homestead, um, heck the Roval, Michigan. I mean, th th there's a lot of tracks with room on the truck schedule, so it helps when that's uh that's the chemistry it can really kick kick the seasons off on a very good note so i, I might i don't know if i'll expect that for the xfinity in the cup series but yeah it, it definitely helps the, the truck series starting to set an example at daytona going flag to flag yeah uh, i agree with you 100 uh, percent guys remember also for those tuning in be sure to let everyone know there's still several spots open but we also had the uh, situation where quite a few people were interested but circumstance would not allow them to get on the track we're hoping that Talladega in a couple weeks will not be what uh, takes place for them um, in that series so Welp Dane scores the first one for Nas Motorsports in that number one uh, Chevrolet 
Uh, is is he the favorite to win a championship in this series? Is that I cut out? Oh, oh, uh, Lawden. I keep saying oh, Will Bang because that's his. Um, yeah, but is he the favorite to win a championship? This uh, season? yeah, I'm not gonna say that no because. Um, Lawden has had some issues staying consistent within the series. He's gotten frustrated many, many times around the fourth, fifth race, and he just went up and quit for a bit. I mean, it. I don't see it right now. Now, if we start to get, if he lasts to the chase, I think you can start to really make a case for him. But right now, I, I really just cannot um, see Lawden doing anything uh, spectacular. I think he he could. He could quit. He could stay. I don't know. But right now, I, I wouldn't put classify really him as the uh, the real uh, dominant one. I would say that the guy that we got to start to look forward to on the mile and a half and the two miles, I think Josh Josh is going to put up a really big fight this season in the truck series um, looking at the roster. I, th I think it will be a lot more competitive than it was last season up front, but I think we could be looking towards the midway part of the season seeing that uh, Josh could be up front fighting for wins every week. You know, he, he's definitely shown us that he's pretty fast when he shows up. So, uh, yeah, I'll be in, It's We haven't seen enough. Obviously, it's just Daytona, and next week's going to, or uh, this upcoming week is going to be Talladega. So, I, I haven't seen enough yet. These are two tracks that you, you can't really gather a lot. I mean, you can gather something, but you can't really gather a lot. Um, I think Homestead's where we're really going to get a picture of uh, where everybody's at right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can agree with that. I, um, I also don't think, you know, Laden's kind of the favorite yet. I mean, he has a win under his belt. That's great. Um, but now, can he use the momentum that he's carried from this win at Daytona and uh, get a and get a boost and potentially be up front week in, week out, com still competing for wins? Because if this is a one-off deal, then he's he's not going to be uh, he's not going to be the favorite in the chase. But if he can keep what uh, keep up the consistency like he did at Daytona um, and keep getting wins throughout the season. He will. He could definitely be a factor into uh, who wins the championship. But like Fractured said, this roster is. It's it, there's there's some veterans in here, and then there's some new people. So um, you know, I think I think once they get the trucks get to Homestead, it'll kind of we'll be able to see kind of who who was able to run up front week in and week out, and uh, who who's going to kind of need some work. But uh, you know, I'm I'm excited to see what the the trucks have in store. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's keep in mind also with the 14-man roster, this adds an extra um, uh, extra round to the playoffs. It will mirror the format that is in the X series. So instead of doing two rounds of three, it'll be 3-3-3, three, 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 just like the X series. The 14-man roster, meaning ninth place, is the cutoff for the chase. So, so far, all these guys are in the chase, but we are expected to have just like last season, uh, Daytona, where uh, the account was so low, even officials had to step in and run. And then the next race at Auto Club, it was maxed out. Um, we're expecting that kind of showing as people's circumstances after the holiday season are more preferable uh, to racing. So before we move forward, obviously a new season, that means new truck teams and new team points battle. KBM was the winner of the uh, of last season's team points battle, and they were awarded the 50 bonus points. Right now, KBM sits in second. You also have Nice Motorsports, uh, uh, Nemico Motorsports, Thor Racing. You have Josh Motorsports, uh, the number 42 with OJC, and then PBR, which is actually an official uh, race team. They're bringing up the rear. Uh, who you guys like as a favorite? I know it's again it's early. Who you guys like as a favorite to uh, win the team points battle this season? Who's on Nas right now? Uh, right now it's um, Welpdang or Laden and K Dog. K Dog. Oh, um, well after Daytona, um, I'd have to see. I mean, I obviously haven't seen the truck series yet. Uh, this week, um, I think I should be able to be there for the broadcast. I haven't seen it yet, but um, just me making a totally unexpert opinion and going off of the points. Um, <laughs> Nas sitting first and third. Uh, Lawden's not too bad. 
if he sticks it out. So I, I can have confidence in Lawden. I haven't seen K Dog race yet, so I, I don't know yet. But uh, right now, I'm going to go with Nas uh, simply because we, we haven't seen anything yet. And, you know, they're obviously after a very strong start at Daytona. So uh, my illiterate self is going to go with uh, Nas, but it could change uh, at Homestead or something like that. So I'm going to say Nas. I'm going to I'm gonna second that just because, you know, right now Lawden's the only driver with a win and Nas is uh, in, in, in first in the point standings. But, you know, I think as the season goes on, I think it's just it's not going to be one truck team over another. I think they're going to continue to battle it out throughout the season. Um, so definitely once we move on from these restrictor plate tracks, I think the points battle is going to be really important and we're going to be able to actually see, you know, which teams uh, are running up front consistently. And um, I'm, I'm, again, I'm excited. I think these these... Uh, team point standings are very foreshadowed and kind of in the shade a little bit um, for um, some other leagues and for some other things. But, uh, you know, I think it, it really stands out here that team points do matter. And so the, the team point standings um, can be just as exciting as the driver standings. So I'm excited to see um, how those teams shake up and uh, how they compete on the racetrack. Yeah, uh, I got this question for you. What, one trend we're seeing that's starting in the truck series is that there are a lot of single car teams um do you think that that's a benefit in the truck series or is can that hurt you well obviously you don't have as uh as many drivers to accumulate team points for yourself so in that way it's a disadvantage but then again if you show up every week and you're really consistent up at the front then you don't have to use those team points you can keep them in your back pocket and you can really fight for them so if you think about it, it it's kind of like if you have multiple cars they better be good um and you if they are good enough then you don't have to use team points which can go a very long way in the team points championship not having to use them so um if if you're a, a single car and you're up at the front every week it's a it's a pretty big advantage because you don't have to use anything so uh yeah, but then you got the DNF things, man. I mean, if one per, you know, you got a two-car team or a three-car team, you have a higher per, uh, probability of a DNF with three trucks as opposed to one. So the, there's that disadvantage to them. I mean, there, there's a ton of factors that come into it uh, for the team points. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you got um, multiple trucks on one team. One driver just all of a sudden does not show up and is below the cut line. You got to start using those team points, and they can, you know, you use them, use team points on the driver, and then he still doesn't show up, and you just lost all those team points, and you can't get them back. So there are advantages and disadvantages. I think being a single truck team, um, especially maybe to start out, you're kind of just working on yourself, working on your own team, and just worrying about what your truck is doing, and um, so that can definitely be advantage, especially if you're new, because then you can just focus solely on how you can get better rather than, you know, helping you and someone else get better. That could potentially cause some issues. Um, but then again, if you DNF as a single truck team, you get literally, you get no points. Whereas if you DNF, but then you got two, you've got two other teammates and they finish the race, you can still kind of get some team points even if you don't finish. So, uh, like Fractured said, there are some disadvantages and advantages. Um, but right now, if I'm like brand new and racing in the truck series, I would want to be a single car team. Okay, so we'll see how these single car teams versus multi-truck teams, uh, how it pans out in the, in the team points. Obviously, again, more trucks, more guys coming in. Um, as individuals who are running may invite some friends that they run with before they come into the league they may want to team up we may see some teams form so it's something to keep our eye out on so many questions that need to be answered at the start of the season that's what makes it so exciting all right let's move on to our x series and let's move back to our breaking news and that is hair bear deciding to depart cmr he's headed from Club Munster over to JR Motorsports, he's going to drive the 7. Um, he will have a teammate on the series. That is Dale Jr., who is uh, there as a team as his teammate so far. And we have to also assume that if Foreign Whip can make his way back, he's probably going to want to return to the car that uh, he, he ran before. And that was the nine, also a JR Motorsports car. So, uh, Fractured, what's your opinion on the move for Hair Bear? 
Uh, well, my opinion of it is it had nothing to do with performance. It all had to do with the paint schemes available for the 7. Uh, I don't think Hairbird's too worried about what the is on, if I'm totally honest with you. Um, you know, the 7's got some pretty nice paint schemes, I'd have to say. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's about all I got for you, really. I don't think it's a performance issue. I mean... Oh, man, I'm going to get myself in trouble. Dale Jr. has uh, been very inconsistent, so in that sense, it doesn't make any sense. So I I'm going to go with the fact that he's doing it because the paint schemes look cool and not because he hates Cookie. Dunker, <laughs> <laughs> uh, any thoughts on that? Um, no, not really. I mean, I don't know. I, I would probably... 100% backup that it's for the paint schemes considering that's just how Hair Bear is but um, nope I don't really have anything to say to that one <laughs> uh, right, I'm known well, for my hot uh, takes here you know <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, well if no comments on that obviously um, the next question is can Hair Bear or aka Chris now can he defend his title as X Series champion this season um, well, I'm slacking here. I need to pull up the roster. Here I am watching college football stuff. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's definitely a possibility what strung Hair Bear out as opposed to everybody else um, last season was his uh, late season heroics. Um, Hair Bear sprung out of nowhere late in the season in the Xfinity Series in the chase, picking up wins all over the place. All of a sudden he was the hottest driver out there. So, uh, yeah, it's 100% possible, and looking at the roster, I think it's very similar uh, to last season's. I think he's going to face uh, the challenges up front from uh, Josh, Big Red, Dunker, but, uh, and maybe even Terrier. Terrier came on, too, so uh, I think I'm still putting him as the favorite, even after a rough Daytona, but those paint schemes better look nice when he goes out there and wins. <laughs> 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 Dunker, what are your thoughts? Obviously, you, know, you run this series, so I know you're going to be incredibly biased. Uh, um, but uh, no, I'm playing. <laughs> um, yeah. So, what, yeah, do you playing. think that Hair Bear is going to be someone you're game planning against as you go out there to try to claim a championship? Absolutely. You know, we got a game plan against everybody. But um, in all unbiased fashion, I think Hair Bear could definitely be a favorite to go back to back just because of what I saw last season as in the booth um, and just from past broadcasts of the X series, he can be really consistent. And so that is something that I got to watch out for and try and hopefully deny um, is is his good finishes. He was able to get up front and stay up front in some of those races last season. And so now as a driver, my mindset is completely different. So now I got to figure out, okay, he is, he, how is he getting these consistent uh, consistent finishes what is his strategy and how can I counter that so then I'm in his place and he's either behind me or way in the back like he was at Daytona so um, definitely he could be a favorite but I think um, he's gonna have to climb out of a little deeper hole than he probably is comfortable with at the, the moment um, but hopefully those those paint schemes will get him extra support and he'll be able to get an extra little <laughs> NOS boost under the car or something yeah, all right, um, and let's talk about uh, the 500 uh, since we're trending towards that. the uh, Or not the 500, but rather the 250 there at Daytona. Josh was able to get not only the pole, but get the win. There were a lot of drivers missing. There are missing, obviously, that are scheduled to run. Pennzoil, Wool Tortoise, Spheric Rope, um, to name a few. Uh, the White Hammer, potentially. Um, but there are still several others, uh, Mixer, JV3, Ice. There was many that did not sh were, were not able to show up. Uh, let's throw Wolfpack in that mix as well. So now if those drivers are added in, um, what type of 500 would you have expected? Would the result be the same? And how impressed are you with Josh's uh, finish? Uh, if you had all those drivers in, um, I'd only really be worried about probably two of them, uh, Hammer, which is a big iffy, and uh, Pennzoil. Pennzoil is very, very fast on uh, NASCAR Heat 4, so uh, that that's why I would uh, consider him a pretty big threat. Um, so, uh, you know, Hammer and, and um, oh, drawing a blank here, Hammer and uh, Pennzoil. But 
I don't think even after Josh got the poll, I I really do think that it 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 doesn't doesn't change the fact that he won. I mean, I even with if you add two more drivers, I still think Josh does come away with that one because you know he 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 stayed up front and dominated obviously with that poll. So uh, good for Josh, man. He he's he he's doing a very good job. <laughs> Um, but uh, I don't know if he dominated or not. Sorry, that that might have been a little bit of an interesting one. I, I didn't watch the race. <laughs> I'm I'm just messing with you. I hope he didn't dominate. I just I just look like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he didn't dominate. Let's just say yeah, okay. let's just say he didn't dominate. But he came away with him. He, he did all right. Yeah, he threw it out there. Camp. It's all good. Dunker, what were your okay. thoughts? Obviously, you were in the car. Um. <laughs> Thoughts on the race and how, uh, first, your thoughts on the race, and then second, how do you think the other drivers there would influence uh, what happened out there? More cars on the track. Oh, the race was great. You know, it was really good. Just uh, my front windshield, you know, got a guy pushing me, and I'm just passing everybody and having a great time up here. I'm like, I can see the checkered flag in sight. Um but uh, you know, other than that, um, and the the botched pit stop on the with three to go, never gonna we don't need to talk about that. Um, you know, I think with the other drivers involved, I think it would have probably just made it a little bit more exciting. Um, you know, there are a little bit more cars on the track. We got more tandems. We probably could have had another uh, two packs of four to five cars. So I think it probably would have it wouldn't have changed the outcome. Uh, it just probably would have made it more exciting in the middle, the beginning in the middle of the race. And then I think towards the end, it probably would have broken out to what it was um, and trying to catch me and Big Red. Um, but uh, I think just those guys are going to bring a lot of excitement to the track um, if they if they decide to show up. So um, that just gives a lot of more com that just gives a lot more competition for uh, Hair Bear to try and defend his championship with the, some returning veterans coming back in the league so i think they will uh for sure add some excitement out on the racetrack okay well talladega is their next big chance to get that opportunity in the meantime josh scoring a win and because josh is a single car team then uh we talked about in the truck series the advantage of single car teams versus the advantage of of uh multiple team having multiple teammates this advantage is he gets the team finish and gets the extra bonus points for the race, which gets him up ahead quite a bit over Dunker Wiz. Um, so let's look at now the team well, aspect. We got some CMR. breaking news here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not doing it just because of the paint scheme, trying to get wins with another championship uh, and another championship on a different <laughs> from Hair. <Harry. Harry. laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I notice I've oh. been. Uh, it's not for the paint scheme. It is. I, I, Trying I to get it on the scene, di on a different. All right. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I can understand that. Um, uh, but anyway, looking Liar. at the uh, team points there in the X series. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to be nice. Looking at the X series, uh, team points. CMR obviously. Uh, with the lead there, 115, JR 105, right next in line. So, again, when you talk about this team points battle, how big is Hair Bear's uh, transition to JR in the team points battle? Um, well, Hair Bear was very good last season at doing one thing. He was always consistent. He, he didn't have a lot of lag outs. He didn't DNF a lot either. That was a big thing. He's accumulative for team points. And you put him on the same team as uh, Dale, which, uh, well, uh, is uh, quite frankly the complete opposite. Uh, very inconsistent. <laughs> but um, then uh, if Foreign does come back, then you're adding Hair Bear and Foreign and Dale, which, I mean... Herber and Foreign can definitely make up that team points uh, gap that uh, Dale could potentially create. I'm being mean. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's very big for Junior Motorsports, and I think it kind of cements them as a favorite to win the team points battle. Yeah, Dunk, what's your thoughts on that, man? Well, I think, um, you know, Herber is now transitioned to JR. is probably going to boost JR potentially to uh, uh, first in team points. Um, but uh, I think, I don't know. I really think, um, you know, he 
Probably should have stayed on CMR. I, don't, I still think it's for the paint schemes. Um, so, uh, that'll that'll definitely be uh, interesting to watch. But uh, no, I think Care Bear transitioning to JR um, <laughs> is uh, is definitely going to give them probably a points boost. Um, so we'll see what we'll see what happens the rest of the season and uh, those bright different paint schemes. Yeah, definitely. Well, CMR is now down to one car. And hopefully that car shows at Talladega. So uh, I'll be there. Yeah, Just that's lovely. Let me sign the contract. I'll be there. You know, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Me in the car, coach. Uh, we also have JGR. We know beloved uh, there at JGR. He has a teammate, and uh, his teammate. Did his teammate run. Uh, his teammate did one of his teammates, Woozy Emu. Uh, they both oh. ran um, interesting finishes. That's where they are in team points, sitting third. <laughs> Um, we do have Josh Motorsports again in fourth there with 90 points. SHR making an appearance, an, an, an appearance, an, an appearance. Appearance, we also have two, <laughs> yeah, we also have two individual teams, Terrier Motorsports and then Red Motorsports with Big Red coming back, uh, in the X series. So it's going to be fun to watch. So keep this in mind for everyone that's viewing that are in these two series because I know I'm going to get asked about a 5,000 times. So I'm just going to be like, listen to the speed report. Okay. Truck series, X series will go green July the 11th. That's on a, should be on a Saturday. I'm going to make sure this is right because this is very, very important. Yes, July the 11th is a Saturday. That is after the 4th of July holiday. So you are not racing until then, and July 11th will be at normal race times. We will start our normal schedule of every week. So I just want to make that clear uh, before moving forward. And if you have any questions tonight, please ask me because after tonight, I don't want it's going to be there. I just said it. So please listen to it and mark it down and look at the website and all of that good stuff so that I don't have to repeat myself 10,000 times about this date. There we go. All right. So let's talk about what everybody wants to hear. And that is the cup series who has not ran its Daytona race yet. The Daytona 500 is set to roll. And one of the things that is so special about this Daytona 500 is that in the grid of the 500, the top 16 are one, two, three hot seat drivers in the top 16. Um, that is incredible. So what that literally means is that these hot seat drivers are, that's what they are. They're hot seats. They're not locked into the series. Um, they're just in the Daytona 500 and after they run the Daytona 500, they cannot run Talladega unless they win the final stage of the 500, win the actual complete race. Then they are eligible to run Talladega. If they don't do that, then these hot seat drivers will have to wait until after the drivers who ran the qualifier and or are locked into the series from 7th to 10th run Talladega. And then after that, where they are in points will decide whether they remain a lock-in or whether they uh are remain a, a hot seat driver so that being said if you are the 41 of dawson who will be on the outside uh uh starting fourth or if you are the 11 of josh who's starting fifth or if you are the one of pennzoil that's starting 12th on the grid if you're one of these guys what is your mindset Coming into this 500, what are you going to be trying to do? Um, well, uh, my 
uh, advice would be to drive the heck out of the car for the first, second, and third stages. You need points. I don't care if you're a hot seat or not because there's a good chance that you could potentially be slotted in later on in the season if you continue to do good and the spots continue to open up. So with that being said, I think if I'm any one of those hot seat drivers, your best bet is to win the first stage, win the second stage, and win the third stage. Um, uh that that's really all i got for you you just need to get as many points as possible obviously if you win that third stage you're going to be in a very nice position so uh yeah it, it's it really comes down to you have to win uh win races uh win, win the stages and just consistently be up front and accumulate as much points as possible for yourself absolutely um i think points are very very important i think they should be probably top priority go coming into this race especially uh for the hot seats because um like fractured said you need points if you don't get points you're never you're not going to be you're not going to be in a position to race your way uh in the league via points so <laughs> i think yeah you should win the first stage you should win the second stage and then why not just go win the third stage um just because it will help but especially um if you can't win the first two stages or you can't be there first two stages then try and survive to the closing laps at the end because if you can win the third stage you have a really good chance of being locked in the league and i think as you said you do get locked in if you win the race um uh, if you if they win that final stage then they're guaranteed to run talladega so i think you gotta win you gotta win the race i think you just have to win the race if you can't win if you can't get in a good position to either, to either get points or win stages one and two, focus on the closing laps of the race and trying to get up to the front before the checkered flag flies so you can get it. If you can win the race, then you can breathe a little bit. You can be like, okay, I got another week. I can race to get more points, and then I can get a better cushion to get in the league. If you don't win Daytona, you're basically on a waiting list. It's like, okay. I gotta wait here until someone, until I pass someone without really running a race to get into the league. So I think to make their jobs a little bit easier, you just have to go out and try and get points in stages one and two. But if you if that doesn't work, you just gotta go focus on getting the win. And I think that's gonna be really important later on. Well, we'll see these guys are going to have a lot of work to do. And I was thinking about this earlier, and I was thinking, what if I was in that position? I think if I was in that position, probably the best thing I would do would be trying to survive into the final stage. Yes, you need those points, and yes, you want to win. But at the same time, uh, I don't think, especially as a hot seat, I don't think you want to push it too early because you want to guarantee that you get spots. One thing we saw in the dash races was if you're on that high side and you get a door check at the wrong time, you could send you fly into the back of the pack. And in this situation with the, the stages, it could send you fly into one of those positions where you don't get any stage points. So I think being patient and knowing when to make your move is going to be so key. I think it's going to be so important to find a friend, tuck into that back bumper, and just run. And it may mean sacrificing maybe a stage win if you're second, but at the same time you're getting uh, four points in addition to what you would get. And I think in that final stage, making sure that you're in the right position to be able to get the best possible finish that you can jump out there and try to steal a win something happens because you're going for it and then you wind up going from first to 13th and you know at talladega it's going to be that waiting list time so uh that's just my take on it but man it's 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 so awesome to have these guys to be able to come in and you know have an opportunity as a hot seat to uh, to possibly run all right so let's kind of go over the grid here 88 14, 27, 41, 11, 20, or 11. Let's stop there. I can't count. That's your top five. Uh, what's, your, what's your guys' thoughts on the top five? Let's start with you, Fractured. Well, the top five is uh, filled with some uh, 
well, veterans. Um, you see the 27 up there in third. That does not surprise me one bit. It tracks like Daytona and Talladega. So uh, good on him for that. Uh, who's in the 88 car again? Annihilator. Making Annihilator. Back to the front. Um, yeah, another veteran. Uh, I mean, there's veterans up and down that top five. Uh, Dawson, I think, the 14, correct? Um, no, uh, 14 where... is... Um... Dopey. Dopey. Oh, Dopey's up there. Go figure. Uh, I mean, it, it's a very stacked top five, so you're taking guys that are normally up front and putting them up front to start their race. So they're, they're kind of <laughs> set up. If if they run the race correctly, they're set up for some uh, big things. So, uh, yeah, it's Daytona, though. It's very tough to predict, and it sucks on NASCAR Heat 4. So uh, we'll see how it all works out for them. But, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of depends on the caution levels, I think. That's going to um, d- determine a lot um, between uh, who, who wins this race. Because if, if there's a, a ton of cautions, anybody can win it. But if it goes green, it's going to be the, the team that can pull together a draft and have a good strategy. Absolutely. Um, you know, I like I like Annihilator starting on the pole, making uh, a good start for HMS in their return season, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, Chevys can do. But um, I Lion in a good spot in second, you know, coming off a big season last season. We'll see if he can uh, potentially get something going and continue that momentum from last season. Uh, we got Cookie, made it to the championship four, championship three last season. Um, he's always good at super super speedways and tracks like Daytona and Talladega. So I'm really curious to see what happens in the top five. You know, they, they might stay the top five the whole race. Like Fracture said, if we go green, um, they're, those guys are definitely in a position to hold their ground. Um, but if we get some cautions and they or they get separated, uh, it could really create some different scenarios and really exciting racing out on the racetrack for, for everybody involved. Right. Uh, moving along through the list, uh, 21 in sixth place, the four in seventh, the 72 in eighth, the 48 of uh, Speed B making his return. He'll be starting ninth, and then um, you, Dunker, 10th place. What do you think about that mid pack uh, fractured as far as strength and what can these guys do? Are they in a safe position? For the first couple stages, or do they need to advance? What would you be doing if you're mid-pack? Well, they're going to be needed to do some passing, but uh, my championship favorite is sitting there, um, Wes, in that little mid-pack. I think he's going to be storming up to the front very fast. Uh, I know Daytona's a draft track, but um, Wes is pretty dang good to say, say so myself. So I think it, Wes is going to be up there very fast. Um, you know, it dunkers there um i have you know we saw him in the all-star race obviously have a good race so he he, i think dunker should just follow west to the front if you want my expert opinions nudge nudge wink wink um (laughs) (laughs) yeah what were the other three again i i don't know jp jp uh daytona 500 winner in the past and guess what it was in that 21 and he didn't look half bad in that dash so jp is my sleeper I wouldn't even call him a sleeper. In that 21, he has been very good in the restrictor plates. So uh, watch mm-hmm. out for that 21, JP. He did, He's made it known that he doesn't need teammates to do well. Even at restrictor plates, he just races his own race and puts his head down. So it's a long race, but, man, let me tell you, JP's done it before, and I would not be surprised if he does it again in shocking fashion. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I like this top – I like the 6-10 uh, through 10 as well. You know, you've got JP, who's just – phenomenal on that 21 car um you know we saw him switch over to the 11 um and a couple of seasons ago in the last season and it just wasn't there and now i think he feels more confident that he's in the wood brothers car a car that he's had a lot of success in so i think he's going to be a lot more confident coming into this race he's going to probably make some more moves that he may may not have made in the past to get up to the front so like uh i completely agree the 21 will probably uh sneak up to the front um, something that's interesting to me as a driver and also as a broadcaster is the four and the 72 of Paint and West. Those two do not like each other at all. They don't. Oh, somebody said it before. They do I not. Could. There is, there's, there's, there's a big feud that just does not, it, they, they just do not like each other. 
and it 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 does show on the racetrack. It doesn't really. Sh it shows more in like the garage area and post race, pre race, rather than on the track. But it does have its appearances on the track. So I will be very, very interested as a driver in the driver's seat to see what happens between the four and the seventy two. The four. Uh, I am teammates with the four, so I'm just very curious to see what's going to go on there. They start side by side at the start of the race. They may be thinking, I don't know what's going to happen, but I start right behind one of them, and I'm sure going to be bracing for impact going into turn one. So I don't. <laughs> so uh, then again, if that if that is avoided, and I it might be, I'm just bracing for impact just to, just in case. Um, those two are very good racers. The four of paint is a defend is a champion, not defending champion, is a champion uh, two seasons ago. So it, that's still kind of fresh in his mind. West wants a championship. Um, Paint's still mad at West for what happened in the, at Bristol last season. That might carry over. There's a lot of different oh. factors that will could carry over into this into this race, and it could definitely affect the outcome. Um, so I think those two are probably going to be the highlight in. <laughs> Uh, eighth and ninth, or seventh and eighth. So, um, I will be very, very happy if we make it to turn three and my car is still in one piece. <laughs> oh um, my! <laughs> <laughs> that that's. But, uh, 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 but also for but also for the 48. So moving shifting gears as quickly as possible for uh, the 48 of speed B and and um, coming back or. I think coming back as well, but HMS making a return. Uh, you got the 88 up front. You've got the 48 kind of in the back. I'm gonna be, I'm kind of expecting those two to maybe work together. Um, so we might see the 88 drift back to the 48. We might see the 48 try and race his way up to the 88. Um, so that'll be interesting to see where where that lands, um, uh, and maybe see if we can get HMS a good start in its return season. But uh, Man, F4 and 72 is just cooking on the stove right now. It'll be exciting to see if they reach the boiling point uh, Sunday. Well, let me tell you something. Yep. It may not be Sunday, but they will reach a boiling point. I can almost guarantee you that. It, it, it is going to be a uh, – the gloves are going to be coming off real quick if I had to uh, if I had to put my take on it. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to put my, my take on it, at least first off from a, league, a, a team owner – standpoint because oh, we know the other party actually on. runs on my team <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah for but as a, as a, as a <laughs> team owner i can say that uh, my yeah, driver yeah. is going to put his head down and he's going to race and he's not going to be focused on that until mm. after the race now as a as a league owner i want to be very very clear and uh, not to go sam a smith on everybody but i want to be very oh, very clear Lord. as to what uh. what is what is I hate that too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> very very clear on <laughs> on the take that that uh, that KMR is going to take on this. Now KMR is already already has the rules as far as aggressive driving is concerned and everything, but they are we this league is not going to continue to tolerate uh, the mess or drama that has continued on between these two drivers. If it reaches ahead, then it's going to come down on both of these drivers very, very quickly because we're not going to take away the fun of everyone that comes in here every weekend and wants to have fun to listen to two individuals bicker back and forth or on the racetrack endanger others' chances of winning because they don't want to see each other have success. It's not what this league is about. It's okay to have feuds, but... Um, at some point, you gotta let it go and and be able to move forward, forward. and and race each weekend and have a have a, a, a new weekend, a fresh start. And if we can't do that, then this may not be the league that you want to continue to run in, and uh, that goes to either party. So, my driver's gonna put his head down and race and be prepared for what comes, um, because CMR's got work to do. We gotta get our team into the top four and uh, hopefully in preparation for a championship by the end of the season. So that's my take on that from both angles. Uh, moving on, um, we look at that, uh, the back half of the field now, the 12, the 1, the 95, the 84, the 24, the 18 is from 11th to 16th. Uh, guys, is there any hope or prayer? Anybody you got your eye on? Uh, 
is uh, we prepare for the 500. And you got anybody? Anybody? You got your eye on in that backpack? Well, uh, this is the kind of the pack that I would probably say uh, should be hoping for a caution filled race um, because you know caution races at Daytona tend to be the more exciting ones that can get everybody up front. So. Um, there's definitely a chance, but it's going to be tough starting that far back. It, then again, it is a 100-lap race um, in, in my Daytona 500 when I started 15th. So, I mean, it happens. Um, you know, it. you just got to be able to put your head down and be patient because things will come to you back there. It's tough, but it's very manageable if you know what you're doing. Absolutely. Um, especially if you're, you know, like beloved starting dead last, you know, you won't go from 16th to first and pass everybody up on the high side by the wall in one turn. Really? Um, you got to take it. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, I don't well, know. I've done it, but okay. <laughs> okay. Hammer's done it a lot. A lot. True. True. Of course, that was back when it was legal. So <laughs> before. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it you is. Stop it is doing it. It's slightly possible. Okay. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, but I, I, in, in the league where today that won't happen. And so you just got to sit there and kind of be patient and hope that the group that you pick doesn't lose a draft and can stay with the main, main pack. Um, that might be the biggest concern is getting maybe in a little mishap early and then you fall off pace very quickly. And then you are just praying in inside your helmet for a caution. Um, so that's probably going to be the only thing from the back is, you obviously you're gonna want to caution regardless, um, but trying to work your way, trying to get too much in in a small amount isn't gonna do it. Trying to get too much in one sitting is just not gonna be the way to go for these guys in the back. Um, so it'll be um, interesting to see what strategy they do, um, how patient they will be, if patient at all, and um, if we get some cautions to mix things up a little bit and make it a little bit more interesting. Well. The guys in the back can rest assured that they, they'll they get at least two cautions. And that'll be at the end of uh, both stage one and stage two, the only stage race. And probably like KMR. six flagouts. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's kind of true, too. Um, yeah, I, I I got my eyes on the 84. Was was at the last minute was unable to attend. That's the 84 of Ghost Train. Last minute, unable to attend. He had a sub come out. Thank you, Spirit Rope. He did his best uh, and got the 84 uh, 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 14th on the starting grid. I'm really curious to see his approach um, to the race and how he, whether he decides to get up through the field or just ride it out. Um, that's definitely going to be a safety blanket for the drivers that are up front that are his teammates. If something happens, they know they can fall back to Ghost. Or um, vice versa, you know, he can he knows he has some help if he can get himself up through the field. And I also look at um, the 24 of Spirit Rope. Uh, what we've seen is that Spirit has had a difficult time, you know, holding the line and keeping that groove going. Um, has some had some difficulties in the draft. So is he going to be able to make his way up through the field? I think it's very, very important that he gets at least a couple passes and get in line, try to find the right line that's going to be able to get him, uh, keep him close in the pack, and then just ride, I think, not panic. Um, and if he were to fall back, to try to find some drafting partners so he doesn't lose too much time and go a lap down before the stages end. Uh, now let's talk about uh, a few notable drivers that did not make the cut. Um... <laughs> Dunker, what do you think is the big, uh, the biggest name, uh, you know, outside of Fracture? We won't pick on him too much. Who do you think is the, big, <laughs> the biggest name that uh, was unable to make the 500 mm -hmm. this time around? Uh, I'm going to say Spheric Rope just because of, you Spheric know. Spheric Rope the, made it. He's starting 15. I thought, oh. I thought some, uh, okay. Well, um, um, who didn't make it then? <laughs> it's me. The five. It's me. We, we all the know. five of uh, Chris. <laughs> The 22 of Mixer, the 32 of Fleur, the 20 of Fracture Chain. I'm going to I'm gonna say Hair Bear. I think Hair Bear had a lot of promise. Um, coming off an X-Series championship, he uh, could definitely have made uh, a, a name for himself up in the Cup Series. So 
I'm very surprised that he didn't make it into um, a promising new start after coming off an X-Series championship and a good run in the Cup Series last season. So um, I'll be, it'll be interesting to see how he bounces back um, from this major setback. Fracture? Um, um, uh, I'm going to say myself. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a little while since I've seen the Daytona 500, and, uh, you know, the last time I did, I won it. So, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think I have every right to say myself, and it, I mean, it's disappointing that the game is so trash that, you know, it, it every once in a while likes somebody out, but uh, it is what it is. We'll, we'll be fine. Um, you know, Daytona's only one race in the words of Tony Stewart. It don't matter that much. Well, that's one way to look at it. Um, but that just puts so much more pressure on Talladega. Another plate track. Anything could happen. Come on, I ain't worried about pressure. Uh, Come on now. Uh, no, you're not worried about Come pressure. But we know that with you, anything can happen. You know, so you just need to uh, stop putting negative vibes in my mindset right now, okay? You're upsetting me. <laughs> I'm sorry, your inter your whole internet is a negative vibe. So <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> Dang! <laughs> 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 You're being. Uh, sorry, a little monster came out of there. Um, so it should be a very very interesting <laughs> 500. Let's also include I hate you. this. Um, <laughs> uh, let's also include this, uh, the way this situation works, obviously there are drivers who miss the 500. So this is how this works. If a driver is unable to attend the 500, it will go depending on, uh, lane choice, uh, rather depending on where that driver that can't run was positioned, what lane it was. So for example, if let's say, Josh says, man, I can't make it to the 500 and I can't, I don't get a, he does not get a sub. What happens is the next in line, Hair Bear. If Hair Bear can't make it, then the next in line would be the 22 because they ran the inside lane and was eliminated. And then the same for the outside lane. If uh, Dunker says, man, you know, my internet crashed, then it would be <laughs> the 32 a Fleur and then the 20 a Fractured Chain both with an opportunity You wanna just, uh, I'll slide the check under your desk, so. I'll, you know, you should just put me in, you know, come on, be nice <laughs> I'll slide the check Guys, uh, break, guys, we had a technical difficulty, you guys did not hear that, I repeat, that was technical difficulties on our, our end No, we breaking apologize news, for Fractured Chain is now in the, uh, in the KMR series <laughs> after a million dollar check has been, uh Whoa. Oh, hold on, bro. That check's got to clear. I think it's going to take about <laughs> six business days. <laughs> I don't know where that puts you. But... That's too long, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to sue you. Oh, no. You know, my bank is going to be like, where all this money come from? <laughs> it's like, we, we, don't, we don't do Monopoly money around here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. We don't do Monopoly money. There you go. All right. So... Uh, fracture will do you obviously because myself and um and Dunker Dunker are actually in the five hundred. Must be so nice. let's go. Uh, it was very nice. It is let's very go nice. Daytona mm. five hundred. Mm. Pole winner, race winner, fracture. Well, obviously we got our pole winner. Well, Who's our I'm, race winner? I'm I'm gonna go on a bank with the uh, with the pole winner here and uh, say annihilator. But uh, um, the race winner. <laughs> Uh, let me let me give you a little bit of a think here. There's a lot of good names for this um, for the 500 that, that that could win this one. If I had to say and and bet bet anything on it, I'm gonna say Ghost Train comes from the back to the front and grabs himself the win. Wow, good pick. I okay. like that. Hopefully, Ghost can get that done. What a start that would be. For him, I don't think he has never won the Daytona 500, so that would be huge for him to be a first-time winner, and uh, and then of course he would have a very happy team owner as well. All right, so uh, let's break down how this is gonna work for all those that are watching. 
uh, for the stages. So when the, we load in and get ready to go green, there will be an immediate caution. The caution will be uh, will allow us to set the grid. We will go green on lap two, and then the yellow flag will come out uh, on lap 26. Will be uh, or lap. 27 will be the caution lap 26 is the white flag for stage one um and then stage two will go green on lap 28 and it'll be 28 through 53 and then on the final stage 55 to 105 105 being the white flag 106 being the checker there will be no green white checkers it's going to be normal kmr rules so that means white flag shootout the three to go rule does apply to each stage. So, and the red flag rule applies to each stage. So no one can go and uh, throw a red flag on stage two and then go run down pit road. So um, just a quick question though, I'm just being curious about this before we open up our chat there. Um, do you um, think that um, what, do, what do you think the expectation is for the 500 as far as racing? Do you think it's going to be a lot like we saw in the Dash um, or in the X Series with two car tandems or single single file racing? Or do you think it's going to be some double file three wide racing consistently? Well, the first two stages, I think, are going to be filled with uh, the single file stuff riding around, but that last stage is going to get hot and spicy. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of um, crashing, a lot of tempers flaring. Um, so <laughs> that in that sense, uh, you know, it's happened in past 500s, too. You, you look at the, the 500, that paint one, I mean, it, it was a... The last stage was, uh, we lost a lot of cars, let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, well, yeah, but, that is true. Mm-hmm. The the last stage I think is gonna be the the race that everybody's gonna have to survive the the stage that everybody's gonna have to survive. So uh, uh, I think the first two stages are gonna go relatively clean, but then it's gonna it's gonna fall off. I agree with that. I think maybe one thing I'd add is uh, towards the end of stages one and two, then we might see a little bit more action, just trying to get uh, try and capitalize on some available points. Um, so that might create some excitement in the first two stages, but other than that, I think for uh, the rest of each of the stages, it'll definitely be pretty calm and quiet. And then I think once that final stage goes green, it's just going to be chaos and cautions breed cautions. So it'll be very, very interesting. Hopefully, I can just navigate my way right through that. Um, and uh, but it'll be very interesting from a driver standpoint to see how uh, each driver decides to take a risk. And try that high side because we know that the high side doesn't really work as well. Um, but I think as we wind down the race, it's just going to be all or nothing. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see. I am so looking forward to it, and uh, you know, obviously, to get back in the car for a long off season. Uh, man, it's going to be. Maybe extend the off season another month, very, very please. Funny. I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, but uh, well, well yeah. Yeah. you can do me a favor. I'll slide another check under your desk. Don't worry, <laughs> bruh. I'm trying to figure out where, you, where your money tree must be big, huh? Uh, <laughs> we just max out credit cards here, bro. <laughs> got you. Uh, well, our message board is open. We got a minute or two here. We again want to thank Fracture Chain and Dunker for joining us. And uh, look forward to, um, hopefully, Jaron Hazen getting the broadcast, uh, being in the booth there, which means we're going to get a very solid broadcast. It's going to uh, be fun and exciting as we go 100 laps around Daytona. Um, see how many cars make it across the start line and what surprises we may have we may be saying where wow where did beloved come from he just won the 500 could be saying that, that would make me incredibly oh. happy yeah. that would be that'd be awesome it really would i'd love to I'd give him I, I, a pay I don't know raise. I, I might shed a tear for the old beloved i'd be like oh my goodness beloved you did it finally it only took you a billion years it'd be a long party <laughs> night for him I'm Absolutely. You, 
I'm telling you. <laughs> well, it's been a good speed report. It's good to be back, guys. We want to thank all of our. We were up to nine viewers at one point. Thank you, guys. We're still holding fast at seven. We're gonna call it a night. Uh, one more time. Thank you, Fracture. Thank you, Dunker. And remember to keep an eye on the website and remember to be ready for this weekend. It is uh, KMR, the Cup Series, officially goes green. And all three series will take the green flag. We'll have taken the green flag. So until then, this is KMR out.